In this video, I'm showing you my top three shoulder exercises for round 3D delts. One exercise each for the front, side, and rear heads. And for some extra scientific credibility, I'm bringing in exercise scientist, Dr. Mike Isratel, who's gonna share his top three as well. Up first, front delts. Now, a very common mistake here is actually giving the front delts too much volume since they already get a lot of stimulation from any chest work in your program. In fact, this German study from the 1990s found that bodybuilders have five times the front delt size as non-lifters, but only three times the side delt size as non-lifters. So they often are overemphasized. Would you agree with that? Like side and rear are more important from a I bodybuilding standpoint? That even more to an extreme perspective. Yep. I agree with that so much. I, I go overboard and I say rear delt training is overrated as well. If you're training your back properly, your rear delts should be very well developed. You can just pour a lot of volume into the side delts. Right. And also visually, if you ever see someone who has big shoulders and you look at them, you're like, oh, those delts are really big. Almost in every case, it's the side delts that are actually very yeah. big. Yeah. And the rear delts, of course, construct the rest of it. The front delts matter, but it's side delts that really count. So I think yeah. side delt training should be 70 to 90% of delt training. Wow. So while well, the side delts are clearly the most important, the other two heads still complete the 3D look. So let's start with the anterior or front head. My number one exercise here is a machine shoulder press. And that's simply because being seated increases stability, which will ensure virtually all the tension is being directed to the shoulders where you want it. And secondly, most people can push machine exercises closer to failure without worrying about dropping the weight or breaking technique. And I like this Panada machine in particular because it allows for a huge range of motion and a big stretch on the front delts in the bottom. So one thing I noticed uh, training with Mike on his channel as well, he really, really emphasizes controlled technique and a deep stretch. And also in, in the stretch position, he tends to do a lot of pausing, which can be very humbling in terms of the amount of weight that you use. So that's something I actually don't typically do. I'm, I'm a little bit more of like a constant tension guy most of the time. So that's been really cool. I feel like I'll continue implementing some of that very in my training. Cool. Oh, and another thing I like about this machine is that it's unilateral, meaning each shoulder is forced to work individually, which can be great for fixing any left to right shoulder imbalances. Very that very feels nice. really good. Doesn't it? Yeah. See? Yeah. <laughs> A panata. <laughs> Is that okay to say? I'll usually hit these for six to 10 reps. And of course, any decent shoulder press machine will get the job done. And if you don't have access to one, you can get a very similar effect with a seated dumbbell shoulder press, which is also unilateral and forces each shoulder to work individually. Okay, so Dr. Mike's number one pick for the front delts is an easy bar front raise. And he gave two reasons why. One of the reasons is that it gives a, a ton of motion to the front delts, a huge range of motion there. And also because it is an isolation exercise, and it's pretty rare to see for front delts. Most people choose a compound press, which is cool and all, but if your tricep volume is where it is, if your pecs are sore, if your shoulder joints are upset with you because you've been doing a lot of pressing, maybe the overhead press is not in the cards. If I wanted the maximum effect of something like this, I would actually do it on a free motion machine so that I could move my hand behind the plane of my body and get a huge stretch to the front delt. But a lot of people don't have access to a machine like that, and this is a fine alternative exercise. Okay. It's a similar thing. So the cues here is that you want to keep your chest up. If you cave your chest, you're not stretching your front delts as much. What you want to do is essentially, it's like a curl, except you never bend your elbows. So it just comes up all the way, nice and high and then you milk the eccentric, and it's gonna be hardest here, all the way down, chest up at the bottom. Ugh, goodbye front belts. Do you think it's dangerous to go beyond this point here? I think there's never been a reason to suspect that if you know anatomy. Right. Things that are causing joint pain are, tend to be not so great for the joint, but if you can do this without any joint pain, I mean, listen, if there's something from a cupboard you want that's up there, or you're like, well, I would get it, but I don't want to be crippled for life. That's not the case. I think it's totally fine. And Mike explained that for these, he uses relatively higher reps in the 10 to 20 range with a more explosive positive and a slow and controlled four to five second negative, especially maintaining control at the midpoint where tension is the highest. Finish resisting. Oh, wow. Very nice. Doesn't take a lot. Man, I'll say this. If people are uh, cutting out this part, they're missing out on a lot. I would say the most effective part of this movement, generally there are some nuances here, is from 45 degrees to 135 degrees, here to here. So I can't lie, this is like the craziest front delt pump I think I've had possibly ever. Okay, so with front delts out of the way, we're hitting the most important head for 3D delts, the side delts. So I'm gonna let you go first for side delt. What would be your number one? There are many number ones. You're my number one. So what's the number one number one? Well, an exercise that I think is really top tier is what I call the super ROM lateral, super range of motion lateral. Exactly like a lateral raise, yep. just keep going. Okay, and at any point do I do this or this? Or nope, just, no, just comfy. normal? Okay, yep. so for me, this feels natural. 
to kind of kind of thumbs up it a little bit. Sure. Is that okay? Thumbs up it as little as possible on the way yeah? up. Okay. But try to keep your pinkies up. But if you run into stuff or it feels weird, you can thumbs up naturally. Doesn't feel yes, weird. So you like perfect. this better? Yes. Okay. Because then it activates the side delts. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And let me just explain that very briefly. If I thumb up it, you can see that the resistance path is in line with the front delt fibers. If I do this, now the resistance is in line with the side delt fibers. If you feel pain doing this, then consider going thumbs up. It might yes. be better. Sure. But in my case, I, this feels great. Great. I love so it. So why yeah. not? Mike recommends doing these for moderate to higher reps in the 10 to 20 range, and once again, really emphasizes good control on the negative on each and every rep. All right, so my number one side delt exercise is a cross-body cable Y raise. Most people, when they do lateral raises, go directly out to the side. There's nothing wrong with that. The main reason I like these is the stretch you get here. If you were gonna stretch your side delt, you wouldn't just hold it here. You're not getting a ton of stretch here. If you pull it across your body, now you have more stretch on the delt. Also, most people think of the shoulders as having three distinct heads, the front, side, and rear, but anatomy research shows there are more like seven deltoid compartments, each having unique muscle fibers that fan out in slightly different directions. So hitting the delts from slightly different angles is more likely to make sure that all the fibers get hit evenly. And here's how I do that. I position my torso so that I feel that stretch come in on my side delt, and then I'll sweep the weight out and back, almost as if drawing and flicking a sword. So. <laughs> so we feel the nice stretch, and then we're up, out, and back. Beautiful control, Jeff. That's awesome. Uh, okay. Nice. Next, let's take a look at our top two exercises for the posterior head. Mike's number one pick here is a Super Rom reverse cable fly. I've actually never done them the way he coaches them, so I picked up on some really great cues. A couple of really important cues here. First, you want to go past your hand connection, yep, just like that. People say, well, wouldn't that create asymmetries? Totally, but you just, every other set, what you're gonna do is you're gonna switch your hands, which one goes up or bottom. And a big thing is you want generally to keep your elbows locked out so that you can make sure it's all real delts. You will not be able to use as much load that way, but minimizing the load while maximizing muscle involvement is a really good thing. And here's a big one for the back, Jeff. Go ahead and pull all the way back. Yes. And here, we get a peak contraction to the muscle. You can feel the burn accumulating while oh, you yes. do it. And then slowly peel that muscle out on the way back. So it's a really good thing to really crunch at the top. It won't cost you a ton of reps because it's easy there, but you'll connect to that rear delt. Typically, I would stop about here probably, but now I'm going to here. Yeah. And that extra bit. Yeah makes it way harder. Here's the best part. They actually start to accumulate metabolites. They hurt more and more in that position. You take that pain and you go, okay, I know exactly where my rear delts are because they hurt there. And then I slowly arc out and it's madness and I hate it and then it stretches like crazy. And then the whole thing starts again. <laughs> That's right. And my top pick for the rear delts is the reverse pec deck. And honestly, Dr. Mike gave me the single best cue I've ever heard for this exercise. Here the cue will massively reduce how much you're lifting, but will hit that target muscle better. For a good real delt training, you want to reach mm. forward really far. Also, mm. you'll notice it pre-stretches the rear delts. You're not pulling. You're arcing out to try to paint brush as far of a distance as you possibly can. Punch forward. Yes. And then sweep out. Paint brush out as much as you can. It's like right. if you imagine that there is like you're standing on top of a pile of money and there's a camera <laughs> measuring, you get to keep all of the money you do this with yes. your hands. Yes, let's go. And I'm just gonna show my last two reps here and notice that at no point do I allow myself to pull my arms in. I'm sweeping my arms out and painting as much of the floor as I can on each and every rep. And then as if another, as if you're gonna do another. One thing since I've been training with Mike a little bit that I've heard you say quite a bit is as if you're gonna do another. I really like that cue because it forces you to be intentional with that last negative. Yes. Do it as if you're gonna do another one. So you're yes. controlling, controlling, controlling. Pause, now you're done. And then let go. And that last negative may be one of the most muscle growth promoting portions of any rep you will ever do in any Very set. True. So why skip that? A lot of guys go all the way up and they go, yeah. ugh. And it's like, oh, exactly. you went so, so, so good. Yeah. <laughs> So close. So, so good. close. Yeah. So, there are tons of off-camera analogies to make, but I know you run a nice, wholesome channel, and I will yeah, just yeah, shut yeah. up now. <laughs> Who are you? Are you the Powered by Ice Cream fella? That's me. You're an old fan. <gasps> 
Is that guy actually Thor? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're stopping from here to here, it's like what well, this whole other part there. Yeah. It's like eating half a slice of pizza and throwing the other <laughs> half away. And then slow on the way down is a big one. Okay, I'm gonna get the sleeves up. Oh shit. Yeah, oh shit, did you see that? I changed my mind. Slow, right away, slow, slow, and then slow. Slow, 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 slow. I wanna give a big thank you to Mike. His channel is called Renaissance Periodization. He does all kinds of videos exactly like this. It's just really cool tips and cues and tweaks that I don't think you'll hear on any other channel. Also wanna give a quick shout out to the gym, Pure Muscle and Fitness. They let us film here. They even turned the music down for us, so I really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys all here in the next video. Welcome to my party, we're just getting started A life is a dream or a nightmare